Okay, so we laid out our ridge board, crown up. Um, this is our 12 inch overhang off the front of the building. And then we start with our first rafter here, 24 inches on center, down to 10 foot. And then we split it right there and we'll have a set of rafters split on that. So I figured we've got these boards set up to hold our ridge in place for uh, 10 foot. Um, so mathematically, we know it's a five and 12 pitch. We know we're going uh, five foot seven and a quarter inches, I believe it is. And so mathematically, I figured that I needed to be to the bottom of my ridge board from the top plate, 25 and a half inches. Um, if that's off of here, that's all right, because this is gonna hold my ridge board really close and I can move it once I'm up there to line the rafters up. So I'm gonna set the ridge board up there now that I have the first one laid out. And then we'll start putting in a couple of these rafters to lock it in place. Okay, so from up here you can see that I found center. And then from here to here is 25 and a half. This being flush with our outside wall, so this is theoretically where a first rafter should be. May have to move it a little bit. And then you can see how we've got it set up there. I also have that centered pretty close. And our layout there and our layout on our outside wall. So we're gonna go ahead and start dropping a couple more rafters in. Okay, we're laying out our rafter now and we've crowned it this edge being the top. I'm doing a 512 pitch. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. I'm going to use my uh, framing square with these uh, stair buttons or whatever you want to call them. And they're set to five and 12 so that when it's on here, and the first thing I did is mark along this edge giving me the this would be the ridge end of the uh, rafter and then just bring it over like this to finish this line off and then um, this building was not a it didn't end on an even number uh, because of the space that we had to fit I wanted to get as much building as I could in there. So the building is 11 foot three and five eighths wide, measuring from the uh, outside of the top plate on one end to the outside of the top plate on the other end. Uh, so half of that is 67 and five eighths. So that is our, uh, is half of, half of the span of the building, the span being 135 and a half. Um, you can reference uh, rafter books. I don't have one with me. That'll break that down for you and you can use your speed square and mark. Like I said, we're doing common. So you pivot and you would hold the five here and you can see we have an angle and it'll also tell me so this is a 22 and a half degree angle in case I want to cut these on the miter box but I'm gonna step this off because it's a it's an odd numbered width the easiest way to get an exact rafter and the quickest math wise is to step this off so I know that 67 and 5 eighths that's uh, 5 foot is 60 inches and then I got to add seven and five eighths plus a 12 inch overhang. So what we can do is just step this off. So if I mark 12 here, that's one, one foot. So then I can come over, line up on my edge, mark 12 here. That's two foot. Same thing again, mark my 12 here. That's three foot. And this is, I'm making a pattern that will cut the rafters. Um, so mark 12 again, that's four foot. One more time is five foot. 
So I'm at my 60 inches. So I will come over to this mark. And once I'm there, if you see if I fall across the top, I'm going to come to my 7. Get me lined up here. My 7 and 5 ace. And I'm going to come over here and hold on that mark. And then I'm going to mark my 12 inch overhang. And then um, I only bought 8 foot boards, so I can't carry this off to get this last mark. So what I did is just take my speed square from that mark and get my 5 and 12 pitch and mark that. So this includes my overhang. Now I'm going to come back here to where my rafter ended and I'm going to carry this up like that. Get that on there right. Finish this line. So when we get to our end of wall, end of wall number here or mark with our overhang being over here you know and you carry this through like a bird's mouth cut and the quickest way to do that is split 12 inch run into thirds because you need to leave two thirds of the material here and so if you divide 12 by three one third's four two thirds is eight so you slide maintaining everything like it is here Slide down till you get eight, okay? And you can see that we can draw across here. But I need to add a half inch back for the plywood that's on the outside of the wall. So I'm gonna come over here like that. I'm gonna draw my bird's mouth and then I'm gonna come back to that half inch mark here. And I'm gonna draw that down. So this is my bird's mouth and you'll notice that it is from here three and a half inches so it should sit on the top plate perfectly and this should be about an inch and a half and it is and then we'll go ahead and cut one of these out and I'll show you what it looks like. okay so here's our pattern with our overhang of course the crown is up on the top edge on all your rafters and you can see this was the the line that showed the end of the uh, outside wall and then we added the half inch for the sheeting and then this is our plumb cut for the ridge and then uh, what we did what I do is I cut two of these and I take them out there and I sit them in place and make sure that everything lines up right and that I don't have to make any adjustments. Then I come back down and our ridge is an inch and a half wide. So half of an inch and a half is three quarters. So after I've gone up and I've fit two together point to point here and I've sat them on the wall and I'm sure that they work, then I'll come down and I'll cut three quarters of an inch off of here for half the thickness of the ridge board. And then this will become my pattern and I'll use this to trace all the rafters and then we'll just go put them up. Okay, so I'm up here now. We didn't get a chance to film putting these up. Once we got going, we had to just keep rolling with it, but I will show you how things work here. You can see how the rafters drop in and line up on the ridge. We, uh, cut these are called collar ties and we put those on every other plus the outside uh, trusses and then I did go ahead and cut some uh, ceiling joists as you can see and uh, they run from outside to outside I just did those on every other truss. Um, we just put them in because then we can store some long boards 
up in the attic area. You can see this was our brace holding our ridge in place. This is the last thing we gotta take out. Here's our 12 inch overhang. Each one of these is on the, on the line. There's where our ridges join together. And we stopped our ceiling joists here because from here back, we're gonna drop down and build a little loft that's at eight foot with a set of stairs that comes up along the window. And there'll be storage up there and then you can walk up there and then from the loft you could slide boards in across here. And we may come and put the rest of the ceiling joists back in later um, if I have leftover lumber, but This is an example of the bird's mouth with the half inch added on. You can see the sheeting just barely touched it. We should have kept it a little shorter. I thought I was there, but so we just had to add that in. And you just toenail the rafters on either side, right on the line. And then you nail through the back of the ridge to hold them in place. Just kind of an update. We did, after we got the walls in, we shot them with the power shotgun just to hold them in place and we did come back and do uh, wedge it or redhead anchors and drill them in. And then I like to leave the jack or trimmer studs out and then I shoot a shot to power shots in and then we set the jack studs on top that helps keep that wall from moving. Of course we put an anchor close to it anyways. You can kind of see from inside what we got going on here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take these braces down pretty soon here. We really don't need them now, but we gotta frame the gable ends in and uh, we're gonna put our fascia boards on so we can get ready to put plywood on the roof. I went ahead and cut the window and door out. And we did get the sheeting run up on the sides. We left the gables so that we could just go ahead and take it all the way up once we frame the gable ends in.